Welcome to Walking the Earth. Today we are at Nama Buddha in the Kathmandu Valley of Nepal. And we are at a Tibetan Buddhist Gompa, a monastery complex. Gompa is related to, um, the word Gompa is related to a distant place, to a, or a remote location where um, religious learning takes place. It's a, it's a type of a spiritual fortification. And here we've got a stupa, a chorten. And typically, sacred objects are buried underneath underneath a stupa, and so it could be. Um, so this this could include the ashes or or bones or remains of um, of a of a of an enlightened being, of a Buddha, um, a solitary Buddha, a fully enlightened Buddha, of a bodhisattva, of a spiritual teacher, a lama. You know, meaning a, a, a type of um, scholar, a high-level scholar, um, who is considered to be a holy being within within the Tibetan tradition, or it could include precious objects like a like a sacred script underneath it. Um, and I'm not sure if this is the the stupa that has um, the bones of a bodhisattva underneath it or not, um, or if it's at another location in the monastic grounds. Um, some of the areas are closed off today. This may be it though, because it has a number of the silk scarves um, tied up around it. Um, what, what people will typically do is circumambulate around a stupa. Um, so they will make rounds in a clockwise direction, um, walking around it um, clockwise. And the, the, you know, the, the silk cloths, like if you meet a Tibetan Lama, oftentimes a person, a devotee, will place the silk cloth around his neck and then he will place it back around their neck. And it's a way to transfer energy without, um, or blessing, without um, t physical touch. Um, because monastics are not supposed to touch, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, to touch others in typical situations, at least non-monastics. And certainly a, a man should not touch a woman within the monastic tradition, or a woman a man. Um, so this this stupa i believe that it has the it's said to have had, to have the bones of a bodhisattva associated with the nama buddha story so um nama buddha is i've read a, a number as i was doing a little a little quick background research um it's it's considered to be very sacred to the tibetan buddhists and other buddhists beyond that it's associated with the jataka tales the jataka tales are tales of uh the buddha of his previous lives they have morals morals to the story typically um something that that as a bodhisattva bodhisattva is a wisdom being and bodhisattvas are on the path to enlightenment but they're not completely enlightened beings they have not attained complete buddhahood in the mahayana tradition there are many many buddhas an infinite number of buddhas potentially as far as i'm aware whereas in the theravada tradition some of the older schools there are a smaller number of of buddhas or enlightened beings um, I believe 29 within the Theravada tradition or somewhere there about including a future Buddha named Maitreya or Metea, which is related to friendliness and loving kindness. Um, he's said to be coming in, in, in a, at a future date. Um, and so a Bodhisattva is on the path to enlightenment. So before uh, Shakyamuni Buddha attains enlightenment, he goes through many different lifetimes where he is learning many different lessons and accumulating the merit that he will need in order to attain complete enlightenment at some point in a uh, in a life where you know a, a culminatory lifetime where everything comes together now there are many many different understandings about uh what rebirth means within the buddhist context and so we'll discuss that in some other video but it's it's uh you know, it's very sophisticated from my understanding and and, um, and there's much to learn as of yet, but the Jataka tales tell stories about his previous lives. Um, in one of them associated with this location, and you, you can, uh, it was, it's, the Jataka tales are very, very popular throughout the entire uh, Buddhist world. They're very typically told to young children and they have morals to the story. And they're very similar to Aesop's tales and the Panchatantra stories, which actually have some of the Jataka tales embedded within them. Um, and there are even, um, the Muslim world took in some, uh, some of these stories and retold them and then passed them on to the Christian world. So, for instance, uh, I think there was a, a saint named Jehoshaphat 
from the story of Barlam and Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat actually is from the word Bodhisattva. So there was a period of time when Eastern and Western, Western Christians actually had a saint that was actually the Buddha within within their their tradition and I, I don't believe that he still holds that status because scholars have realized that it only um, enters into the Christian tradition in the Middle Ages it's very interesting I'd like to do a little research and tell that story in a video at some point but um, anyway I will go ahead and 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 just relate a little bit about this Nama Buddha story um, so my understanding of it is that um, long before Shakyamuni, Shakyamuni Buddha um, attained enlightenment, before um, Siddhartha Gautama began seeking enlightenment diligently, um, he had he'd been born in this region and he was born in a royal family. And this, I believe this may have been the lifetime before he becomes Shakyamuni uh, or, or uh, before he becomes um, Siddhartha Gautama. And he, there, was, there was this series of beautiful forests and um, the, he was one of three brothers and he goes to um, on a pleasure trip into the forests, these beautiful forests. And um, along the way, they see a, a tigress who's starving and she has just a few days before given birth to um, five young cubs. And the princes converse what they can do because she's clearly starving to death. The cubs have no milk to drink. They're all going to die. Um, what can they do? Can they, you know, um, can they go and kill a creature and bring the, the dead creature for her to eat and drink of its blood and eat of its flesh? Um, the prince who is going to be born as, as Siddhartha Gautama in his next lifetime or in a future lifetime, he um, opposes this idea because it would mean taking a creature's life which would bring sin upon him. And, it, you know, so he doesn't want to do this. So he's contemplating what to do. He sends his brothers away and he decides that he he has this this uh, spontaneous thought that he should sacrifice himself to the tigress and her babies. And so, um, you know, like it, at the entrance of of the Gompa of the monastic complex, they have a, um, they have plaques in four different languages telling this story. And it's, it's conveyed in one of the Mahayana sutras, I believe connected to the Jataka tales. Um, and one of them is, is, was written in, uh, Tibetan. One I believe is either in Hindi, Sanskrit, or Nepali. I'm not sure which one. And then one was in English and then one was in, uh, Chinese and Mandarin, I believe. I don't know which, which in particular, but the story so he goes and he lays down, the Bodhisattva lays down in front of the tigress and she can't even move and doesn't do anything um, to him. He's, he's offering his, his body to her. And this place in Tibetan is related to the phrase body gift. So he lays down and then, then the story gets a little bit troubling to me. The, the story has some, has some troubling aspects. So he realizes that she's not going to eat him. So then he gets up and he goes over to a bamboo tree and he takes a, a broken bamboo uh, um, shard and he cuts his throat and, and begins to bleed out and lays down and the tigress instantly devours him. And the skeleton is all that remains. And this is what is at this location, supposedly under the stupa. And then it conveys that there was a uh, this story, and this is not from, I don't believe this is from the Theravada tradition, which tends to focus more on, a, on the historical Buddha. Whereas the Mahayana scriptures tend to sometimes go into more, um, like into more fanciful realms and, you know, um, be more problematic to Theravada and practitioners. Um, but in, in that story, it conveyed that the Buddha tells this story to Ananda and his disciples at this location that they had visited this place. And he told the story and then uh, he then a stupa full of jewels raises up out of the ground and the various disciples, they pay homage to it. And he tells the story, the story that I've conveyed. So um, it's, it's, it's an interesting story, but the, you know, the lesson is that, and then after that, he's able to then be reborn. He gains merit and he's able to then seek the ultimate enlightenment um, from there. And so the point is that, that we should give freely of ourselves. Um, 
personally, while I find many, many beautiful things within the Mahayana traditions, I find these kind of things, these kind of stories troubling. There's another story about uh, a famous monk, he's seeking enlightenment, and a woman, you know, needs his eyeball for a, for a black magic ritual, and he gives his eyeball to her, and I was troubled by that story. And then, you know, this story, you know, that, that where he gives, I think in another version of the tiger story, he throws himself off a cliff and kills himself, which is, you know, like, so it's, it's kind of like a, like combining suicide with, with divine gift giving with, with sadaka, um, so to speak. So this is, this is troubling to me, you know, so he, he, he kills himself for the benefit of others and he is rewarded for this. So personally, this becomes a bit you know, uh, troubling to me and eth ethically problematic. Um, I don't know what what do you, what what are your opinions? You know, like put them in the comments. Your thoughts on the matter. Um, if you think that this is ethically troubling or problematic, you know, uh, most Bud or many Buddhists I know would, would would not take this story literally, but would take it in the sense of you know offering of oneself and 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 sacrificing one's energy and resources to be of benefit to others and this is this is a very extreme and excessive story in my mind to some extent and and it and it potentially could be read the wrong way by people and i don't know if it has been wrong read the wrong way perhaps you know more about this i'm not aware i've, I've never read the jataka tales i've read about them and i've read a couple a couple stories from them over the years but many years ago so i don't know if there are other troubling stories within it or not perhaps you know more about it so this is an interesting place um and it inspires me at some point to to learn a little bit more about the jataka tales and study them a little bit more in in relation to aesop or aesop's fables perhaps in the panchatantra stories um it, you know these these moral stories so anyway i'll go ahead and draw this to a close but everybody be be healthy and be happy